Stranger Things Season 2 is a fun return to the quiet town of Hawkins, as we're brought on another adventure full of mystery, monstrosities, and multidimensional shenanigans. But for me, there was something about this second season that felt familiar, and I'm not talking about the 80s references. It felt oddly repetitive. It was as if I'd seen this all before, and the thing is, I had, in Season 1. While the details are subtle and easy to miss, I realized that the second season had not only reused many story beats from the first one, but even repeated entire narratives in ways both vague and weirdly specific. And it's why, in this episode of The Storyteller's Notebook, a series in which I analyze various storytelling techniques used by various creators in various mediums, I want to talk about Stranger Things and the dangers of repetition. And yes, spoilers ahead. Now, repetition in itself is not inherently a bad thing. In fact, when done right, it can be used to great effect to make jokes and plot twists hit harder. And hell, you could argue that Stranger Things' entire style and premise is repetitive in itself, since it's based around referencing 80s pop culture and reuses already cliched stories about government conspiracies, groups and nerds saving the day, and monsters from other dimensions, even though it manages to reinvent them and make them feel new. But repetition is something that can very easily go wrong as people get bored of watching the same thing over and over and over again. This is something that concerned me about Stranger Things 2 as it recycles a lot of narratives from the original season. Take Max for example. She is a new female character with exceptional skills that the main four boys get obsessed with. After being brought into the group, romantic interest starts to brew, but one of the boys is against her being a part of the friend group. But eventually, after standing up to her abusive male parental figure, she uses her skills to help them and... That's Eleven's story in Season 1. And even Eleven feels like she has the same basic arc this season as she goes against her father's wishes and leaves home, and finds her way into a group of social outcasts before using her powers to put an end to the face-opening threat of the season. And Will, who last season became the central plot device of the show as he's taken by the forces of the Upside Down and must be saved before it's too late, once again becomes a plot device taken by the forces of the Upside Down and must be saved before it's too late. This season shares a lot of shockingly similar narratives with the first one, and while some of them are obvious follow-ons from last season, others are just blatant repeats. And it's not just basic plot lines that are the problem, as even specific story beats end up being recycled. In both seasons, Will ends up managing to communicate through unusual means. Everyone meets up at the buyer's house for a team meeting before diving into the final climax of the story. And a beloved well-meaning character is killed off. Why? Why did you have to kill Barb and Bob? God, even their names sound kinda the same. You sick bastards! There's a lot of stuff Season 2 reuses over the course of its runtime. But for as repetitive as it is, I still think it pulls off some interesting things. Max's story may be a copy of Eleven's, but it doesn't feel anything like hers. Where Eleven was quiet, shy, and scared of the world, Max is confident, snarky, and proudly gives the world the middle finger. And Eleven doesn't mindlessly wander around this world anymore, she moves with purpose as she tries to figure out who she really is. And Will goes from a beloved character everyone loves to being an antagonist for the series. Or at least a tool of the antagonist. A weapon they need to fight. The series flips its stories and characters on their heads to create fascinating new narratives, and that's without even taking into consideration the genuinely new stuff. Like Eleven and Hopper's father-daughter relationship, or Nancy and Jonathan's journey to finally get justice for Barb. Just as we got to learn about this detailed world in Season 1, Season 2 lets us rediscover it and find out things about its setting and characters we never knew about. Although, in its bid to create something new and recapture the show's original sense of mystery and suspense, it fills itself with pointless fluff. This includes the show's new bully, Billy, and to an extent, his little sister, Max. For as much as I like these characters, they both feel like they've been added to the roster just because. They don't really do much aside from create drama. And while Max does at least contribute as a romantic interest, which in itself is questionable, Billy is only there to be a dick. If you remove him from the story, there wouldn't really be much of a difference. And while some would argue that him beating up Steve is the only way that the kids would have been able to get to the tunnels, there are still plenty of ways this could have been achieved without him. The kids could have simply snuck out when Steve wasn't looking, or given how easily Steve gives in to their plans when they get to the tunnels, their argument in this scene could have been lengthened to the point where Steve realizes that the kids are right. 
and Max's usefulness in doing something other than piquing the boy's romantic interest in the show hinges on this moment, since she's the one who drives them there. So if you go with the argument option, she, just like her brother, ends up being a pointless character. And while I'm sure they'll be expanded upon in later seasons, it's a shame they didn't get to do more in this one. And these characters aren't the only pointless part of this series, as there is an entire episode of the second season which, for as interesting as it is by itself, feels like filler. I am, of course, talking about Season 2, Episode 7, The Lost Sister. This episode follows Eleven on the tail end of her journey of self-discovery as she ends up in Chicago to find one of the other children who'd been experimented on. And it is one of the most disliked episodes of Stranger Things so far. And I can see why. It rips the viewer out of the experience with a completely new tone and feeling that breaks the flow and tension established in the previous six episodes. Which is not helped by the fact that the previous episode ends on quite a significant cliffhanger. And just like Billy, I think one of the main reasons it fails is because it doesn't do a lot for the plot. Aside from giving Eleven a bitchin' new outfit, the episode is only there to let Eleven control her powers better, which could have been done in a number of different ways, and to do some world building, to show the viewer that this series isn't just limited to the small town of Hawkins. And while I understand and appreciate the Duffer Brothers' attempt to expand the world of Stranger Things and give us a glimpse of the bigger picture, it was something that, in my opinion, was drawn out and honestly just poorly executed. I think the episode may have worked better if it had been spliced up alongside episode 6 or 8, but still. So is Stranger Things too repetitive? Short answer? Yes. It's trying to recapture that sense of awe and mystery that the initial season managed to pull off so well, while also trying to build off of what had already been established, and as a result, ends up reusing and recycling a lot of material that leaves the season feeling less focused and in some parts pointless and even boring. But the long answer is more complicated. The way in which the show is able to combine these ideas with new characters, new settings, and new twists to make it interesting all over again is quite an achievement. It shows us new sides of a world we thought we already knew. For as many critiques as I have of it, Stranger Things 2 still manages to tell an amazing story with rich and complex characters. If there's one thing to learn from it, it's that no matter how used, abused, or cliched an idea or story is, you can always make it feel fresh and exciting again. All you have to do is make things a little stranger. Just don't overdo it. And yeah, those are my thoughts. Horror month is over! God, that felt like forever! Just like how I felt waiting for season 2, and it was so much fun. Both making the horror-themed videos and Stranger Things. I mean, sure, I have my problems with it, but like I said, it is still a well-made show and I can't wait for season 3. I think what I'm most excited for is to see what happens with the Mind Flayer, because I thought that was the most interesting part of the season. It's just a shame that a lot of stuff from season 2 felt like setup. Am I the only one who felt that, or am I crazy? Anyway, tell me what you think, where you agree, disagree, who your favorite character is, what you think's gonna happen in season 3, etc. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, then check out my last video where I talk about the little things that make The Shining scary. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe to come fly with me. And hopefully, I'll see you later.